So what we're doing in these sessions is we're not doing a scholarly approach to Laban's law. If I don't know German, I didn't translate any from the old German, uh, but we're going to try to revisit a Moravian tradition and write our own spiritual autobiography. And Lebensloff is a German word that means either life's path or life's journey. And I'm not even certain I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't know if all of you know German, but um, I do know that there should be an umlaut over the A for the plural. But a Lebensloff or Lebensloff is an individual's memoir, his life story with special emphasis on the spiritual dimensions. And in our archives in the southern province alone, there are more than 14,000 individual memoirs. Many of those were written, I, I won't say many because I didn't count, many of, several of those are written by the person whose memoir it is. And Zinzendorf suggested that uh, writing a Lebensloft was a way to make the invisible church visible. And it, it is an, a Moravian tradition dating back to 1747. Zinzendorf decided that the memoir of a deceased person would be read during the day's worship service. And that was a way for the deceased and the community to bid farewell to each other. And you can see if you're um, if, if you have been to Moravian funerals, how that, that custom of the memoir is still a dear one. And after, after the memoir was read in that way, Moravians were encouraged to write their own ladies' law, often at midlife. And it is a kind of reflective writing it can be a legacy for our families, our church, our community. If you look at the Moravian Archives um, website, you'll see that um, there is a page just for memoirs. I think I put it in one of those files that you downloaded. It's not, not a really official works cited list um, in a scholarly way, but it is just a list of uh, places I looked or things that you might want to view and I do lead reflective writing uh, workshops and sessions, both for a community group and for trellis. And I've been in one for more than 20 years. So reflective writing I found to be health restoring. And there is research that shows that um, in particular. And one of the ways that we do that sometimes is very simple, a daily examen as a, a prayer of reflection about our day at the end of the day. I, I wrote an e I've been writing emails to people I, I haven't seen very often and had an email conversation with a woman um, the last few days who has three children at home and has, um, you know, is trying to work from home and keep everything together and she said that the best she could do was to list five things that she was grateful for during the day and I said well there you are there's your Laban's Loft you're, you're doing that with those five uh, gratitudes but you also don't have to consider yourself a writer to create a Laban's Loft you can compile or collect or reflect on your life in ways in addition to writing let me see if I can um, when um, I talked to Ruth about doing this workshop online, we talked about one of the reasons for creating a Lebensloft right now during Lent is that it is a reflection. It, um, it, it's an activity we do during Lent, and we can celebrate the gift of our experiences within God's bigger story. We can see a little bit more of the big picture, which today and these, these weeks when we're um, experience, experiencing such uncertainty, I think it's a little bit hard to uh, see a big picture. We can find the movement of God in each of our lives. We can realize our unique place in the kingdom of God. And Shannon and I, I helped Shannon a little 
uh, do some sessions on Enneagrams earlier. And one of the reasons we were doing that was to see our place in God's kingdom. And um, we thought that writing a Levin's Law might be a good um, follow-up to that study. But we could also create sacred space for the spirit to reveal the deeper truths about our relationship with God. And I will say, um, to try to give credit to, to many of the people I borrowed from, uh, so this slide had information that came from Dan Miller at Edgeboro Moravian Church, I believe in Bethlehem. Um, he did a workshop last year at this time for his church and um, did a little differently from the way we're doing it. But um, during Lent, uh, when we have time being our authentic selves and we're looking for God's fingerprint on our lives and looking for new ways to talk about God in our lives and to be a witness to God's work in the world. So um, I'm going to pause for a minute. If I'd had a large group, I was going to try putting you into breakout rooms and having you um, do this in twos or threes. But since we're a small group, we're going to do this all together. And I, I think I need, didn't fix this slide completely after I figured out how many people were registered, but I'm going to ask you, I'm going to look at the participant list and ask that we say our name. And if you feel like you want to, you can tell briefly what your name means or how you got your name, how it's connected to your family or any story about your name and realize we're not doing this in the same way that we did it at New Philadelphia because this is being recorded and um, we don't know who our final audience is. There we had a smaller group that, that um, you know, was working in community. Here we are a small group in community, but we might have a larger audience. So I'm going to say, I'll say my name first. I'm Kay Elizabeth. And my mother named me for her principal's daughter. And that might not be very remarkable. Um, apparently, my mother really liked that principal's daughter. She was a mascot for their graduating class. And the interesting thing about it was years later, a person in my church, uh, Mary Heggie, who was secretary at another church, um, invited me to do a talk to all the Moravian, I mean, excuse me, all the Methodist secretaries, and they would give me lunch, and they wanted me to talk about grammar. Now, can you imagine a group <laughs> inviting someone to talk about grammar? So I sat beside a woman who said, oh, my name is Kay also. And she, and she said, and your last name sounds a lot like my, my last name before I was married. So she turned out to be the daughter of that principal. So I met her. All right, that was a little bit longer story. Cindy, can you tell us a little bit about your name? Um, I was told that they played a game at my mother's baby shower and my name was one of the names that was put in the basket. <laughs> Neat. All right, Dave. Uh, my name is David Lawrence, and my father's name was David, but he had a different middle name, so I'm not a junior. Uh, I know David means beloved. I'm the youngest of four children. Nancy? My name is Nancy Lenora, and I'm named after my grandmother. Her name was Emma Lenora, and my great-grandmother, and her name was Nancy Christine. All right, so Shannon? Um, my name is Shannon McGinnis, and it has both Irish and Scottish roots, and I have both Irish and Scottish roots. But um, 
the Irish uh, part of my heritage. My mom was um, very intrigued by it, by my dad's Irish roots. And so to go along with her McGinnis last name, she decided to name all three of her children with Mm -hmm. um, very Irish first names. So I'm Shannon and my sister is Erin and my brother is Sean Ryan. So um, when we've actually met Irish people throughout the years, they've kind of made fun of us a little bit at how Mm -hmm. Irish we are. (laughs) And Sheila. Uh, Yes, well, the story in my family is that my mother just read my name in a a movie magazine or else by seeing it on the screen. I'm not sure which it is, but that's that's how she uh, came across it. At one time, we had plaques with the biblical names of all of our family. I've looked that up real quick, and uh, it's the Latin derivative. It means heavenly, but uh, when it went to the Bible meaning, it said blind, heavenly, or shining one. So I'll just probably pick out the last two. (laughs) That's the good thing about telling your story. You can pick out the details you want. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Well, and one of the first things you might uh, write about in the Lebensloft is your name. Um, The the questions that you download or that you receive by email um, also came from several sources, but the first part uh, suggests that you write, where did your name come from? Something about your family, who's in your family? what you currently do for a living, what your hobbies or interests or likes and dislikes are. And I like to give notebooks to people. I'm going to skip down to this. I like to give these composition books to participants who are are going to write because it's bound. You're not as likely to tear out sheets. Um, You can write one of the questions or, um, one thing at the top of a page and make lists, for example, and those lists might generate some part of your Lebensloft. You might choose to write about just one thing in the list or um, write briefly about all of them and one in detail. So that might be a way to, um, I wish I could hand you one of these notebooks right now. I have some right beside me, but um, you know, there is no one way to do this. That's one possibility. All right, so I can't see this particular. All right, that's the, what I intended to, to do is to give you some questions to guide you in writing. And we won't share our Lebensloft in these sessions online, but we may share some parts if, if you choose. And I'll offer some prompts for writing or thinking about your life path and um, we'll, we won't spend a long time writing since we don't have a long time during the session. But if you choose to write to some of the prompts, you might want to bring back what you have for the next week and share a little bit of it. Um, there, and I said there were ways you could do a Lebensloft without writing or other than writing or in addition to writing. You could choose some songs or hymns that have meant something in particular to you. Um, I experienced Lebensloft being shared in Gemeinschaft and one person in one of my groups shared seven photographs that told the story of her spiritual life. And a lot of them were family photographs, but she told her story without writing it. And then I'm going to to give you the prompt that some of you have done before in just a few minutes, the I am from, which could be expanded. Um, You could write your whole Lebensloft with lines that begin with I am from or I am or something similar to that. Um, James Taylor did My Life in Seven Songs. So that's that's also one of the possibilities. And I did call your attention to the chat box. 
and I'm not monitoring it very much right now. And I think I think Hannah has already moved on to another. Um, let's see. Yep, Hannah's not here. So if you have a question or a comment um, and don't want to interrupt, you can put it in the chat box. And there's there's an option in the chat box where the two cell is. You can either send everyone in the meeting or each person's name is listed. Now, if you want to say bad things about me behind my back, you could just send it one to the other privately. I hope you won't do that. So I don't think I can see those. So at this point, any questions or comments? Kay, did you say what you've just given us on screen is in the email too? Hannah said she was going to email it right before she left. So and these suggestions? These well, no, not all the suggestions. If you would like to, if I can send you the slides or right, send them to her and have her send them by email if you want those. I don't know if there's, you know, that particularly useful information, but we could do that. I saved those as PDFs, which is what we had talked about in the, the trainings rather than leave it as a slideshow. So it's uh -huh. a PDF and I, I, it would be um, something I could also have her email you if, if you'd like. Well, it would seem to be helpful. I mean, um... well, the other thing, the other way it might be helpful is to do when we are able to be back face to face, you could do that for, for a group yourself at your own church. Oh, okay. So, and, and these, these, some of these slides were some, as I mentioned from Dave, Dan Miller, um, and some of the information is what I had used before in writing. Okay. So, all right, I'm gonna put that note. Because I need to write that in, okay. Any other questions or comments at this point? And I don't see the timer on my screen. Yes, I do. We have about 18 minutes, I think. And I, I don't think this will cut us off right at five o'clock, but I'm trying to be aware of your time as well. So the prompt that I, I'll share today is from a poem by George Ella Lyon. And this has been used with all ages, all groups, um, many groups rather, all over. She is the poet laureate or was the poet laureate of Kentucky for a while. And one of the, the files that you had either downloaded or, um, I just saw Hannah's message, sorry. Down, it, one of the things that you downloaded or had emailed to you was a template for this poem and a copy of the poem with another version of it on the second page. So I'm going to share the poem. I am from clothespins, from Clorox and carbon tetrachloride. I'm from the dirt under the back porch black, glistening, it tasted like beets. I'm from the forsythia bush, the Dutch elm, whose long gone limbs I remember as if they were my own. I'm from fudge and eyeglasses, from Imogene and Alifair. I'm from the know-it-alls and the pass-it-ons, from perk up and pipe down. I'm from he restoreth my soul with a cottontail lamb and 10 verses I can say myself. Mm. I'm from Artemis and Billy's branch, fried corn and strong coffee, from the finger my grandfather lost to the auger, the eye my father shut to keep his sight. Under my bed was a dress box spilling old pictures, a sift of lost faces to drift beneath my dreams. I'm from those moments snapped before I budded, leaf fall from the family tree. And after I shared this, um, was, okay, I might have lost Cindy. After I shared this with um, the group at New Philadelphia, 
at the end of the session, somebody said, but I thought we were going to write a spiritual autobiography. And I said, we are, but I think we're looking at where God is in our lives. And in this particular poem, I'm from, he restoreth my soul with a cottontail lamb and 10 verses, I can say myself, does tell part of her spiritual journey. Um, so uh, my um, challenge to you, and some of you have already done this, but my challenge to you would be to take about 10 or 15 minutes sometime between now and next Thursday and just write the words I'm from, I'm from at the beginnings of several lines and see what comes to you about your own um, childhood, about your own life experience. And if you're looking at the writing your Lebensloff handout while you're doing that, um, the, some of the questions at the beginning, besides where did your name come from, um, included where did you grow up, what was the neighborhood like where you lived, uh, any childhood memories, what's your earliest memory of God. So some of those could be answered easily with a I am from line. That's one way to write a whole Lebensloff if you choose. So um, let me see if I can get back to, not, I think that's, I don't need to, I'm gonna take my screen back. I hope I'm gonna take my screen back. <laughs> so how's that? All right. Can everybody see everybody who's still here? Yes, yep. except for Sandy. All right, now I don't know if she had trouble with the phone or, or not. Um, I'm gonna end with something in just a minute, but I'll, I'll show you um, something that's fairly simple too, that is a book called Start Where You Are. And in it, there are, Whoops. Okay. There, there are quotations and prompts that also could be used to write your Leibniz law. You don't have to use any of the suggestions I mentioned. You could just as easily take those questions and answer them. Um, and that could be your Leibniz law, or you could choose the questions you want. Um, and I think, Cindy, I'm going to see if I can... All right, it's all right. Um, some of you saw this, maybe. Uh, Moravian women's memoirs. These are from uh, the northern province around Bethlehem. Catherine Fall, who is an associate professor of German at Bucknell University, um, collected these autobiographical writings of 30 women. That was... Uh, one of the books used, and I think that's also on that li on the list of resources. Um, did we lose? There we go. Welcome back. <laughs> All right. So, um, any questions, comments, um, wishes for what we what you would like to do during this? Tom, if you if you come back for three more weeks. I just wanted to mention that um, I work at the Moravian Music Foundation, which is in the same building as the Raven Archives. And so I'm f familiar with uh, the staff there and, and some of their capabilities. Um, besides having a collection of memoirs, Lebensläufe is the, is the German pronunciation for the plural, um, there were a number of these published in what's called the Nachrichten. The Nachrichten were news, uh, a, kind of a news paper, or not, news journal that was copied and sent to various Moravian settlements around the world. At first they were done by hand and later they were printed. Um, 
but in them, in the Nakrikton, you will find sermons by some notable Moravian pastors, and you will also see um, uh, Lebensläufe of a number of people that were uh, important servants of the church that they wanted to uh, highlight uh, after, after they passed. Uh, so as you mentioned before, a lot of times people would write their own Lebenslauf and late in their life after they stopped doing that themselves, the pastor would finish it uh, for the time of the person's funeral. Thank you. And thank you for that um, German pronunciation and, and distinction there. I appreciate that. Um, so I have a question. So Dave, can you get online and like, could I pull the memoirs for, from my parents? Is all, is that been... Online, you have to go to the archives, that's, which is difficult now because it's closed. Right. Um, yeah. But there is a, there are card files um, yeah. that will let you know if uh, a, a memoir is available. And they also have uh, a spreadsheet on some computers there. And, and uh, Nicole Craby is the person you need to talk to. But, so all of the things you just mentioned, I would have to go there. Right. Okay. We, we might um, see if we could invite Eric to join one of the Zoom um, sessions and, and share a little bit of information that way too. Yeah, that would be good. All right. Anything else? Anybody else? All right, so I'm thinking I don't now see my, oh, I do see my time. We have just a few minutes left. Um, so what we tried to do today was, first of all, get around a little bit in, the, in a Zoom room. Um, off, I offered you some files in the chat and they were supposed to have been emailed by Hannah. And they're also supposed to be able to be downloaded from the moravian.org slash BCM site. Um, but I think Hannah said it would be next week, first of next week, maybe before that happens. Um, there, when I looked at the schedule today, there's nobody working in the building for the Board of Cooperative Ministries, but there sure are a lot of people working from home and doing Zoom uh, tours and sessions. Um, we also examined some ways to write a Lebensloff, and, and I promised you this was not a scholarly presentation, but I certainly appreciate Dave's addition to the information. Um, I really wanted people to know that any of us, all of us are writers. Any of us can put together a Lebensloft and it can be um, in different media. I shared with you, or we shared our names a little bit, a story of our name. And we looked at a prompt that is a way to structure a Lebensloft if you choose and certainly a way to begin thinking about your life and the place of God in your, in your life. So if you don't have other questions, I would like to switch back to, the, uh, to my um, desktop screen and share a prayer. And again, this is a prayer we prayed um, in the Lebensloft sessions at New Philadelphia, but it's from the Moravian Book of Worship. Any other questions, comments, anything about Zoom that you need to? Uh, I, I just have a quick question. In our next session, will we share anything that we will be looking at for ourselves this week? Suggestions of the ways to write and so forth? Yes, I'd, I'd like at least for people to share what has worked or what hasn't worked. If you want to share a few lines of, of something you've read or written rather, uh, I'd welcome that. I'm a little bit um, hesitant to have us share a whole Lebensloft because it's being recorded and because oh, of the yeah. time. But 
um, mm -hmm. I hope that what we do is uh, also something you could apply at your own church if you want to either do uh, do sessions within your congregation using Zoom while we're not able to be face to face, or whether you do that when we're back together. So, does that answer what you were asking? Yes. I, yes. Uh, thank you. Okay. All right, I'm going to try my shared screen one more time. And I'm not doing this seamlessly either, but um, mm -hmm. trying here. Okay. So I invite you to, to pray this together as God created the heavens. The earth to do life in us. God's love be known, known to, to us, us today, today for Jesus, for Christ. Jesus Christ. And as tiny pebbles thrown into a pond, pond cause ripples, ripples to move outward in ever widening circles. May our love, our love move, move from this place outward, expanding, expanding embrace our, our neighbors, our community, our human, our human family, family, and our world. May all that we all do and say, and, say and, and live be a witness, witness be a prayer, and, prayer, and, and be a celebration. celebration. Amen. Amen. And there and those are the resources I think you already have. So let me see if I can get back to the. And we actually have finished about three minutes early. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, you know, we're I doing this with a group in our church that was um, a, essentially a small community. We would have shared more aloud maybe and um shannon and nancy yeah could tell you that we also um used a video clip to talk about the importance of learning names of each other um but i didn't do that because i wasn't sure about uh copyright for for today so we just for we just had the courage to try something new. Or I've had the courage to try something mm -hmm. new. Not all of you did, I think. But but thank you so much for for joining today. And I hope you'll come back next week at four on Thursday. And if you can't, I'll you'll still get resources sent to you because you did register for the session. <laughs>